Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use VCAs or VCA lead and follow tracks in Reaper. Now, a VCA or a VCA lead track is a great way of controlling groups of tracks compared to regular groups or folders. So it's very useful for creating subgroups that control similar tracks like drums, guitars, or vocals. So we can adjust the level of the VCA lead track with just one fader. So the project in front of me here with some drums, a bass track, a piano, and a bunch of guitar tracks. But before we get started, I wanna change the volume knobs on our tracks to be faders, which will make it easier to see them when they move in this video. So let's go to the options menu and go down here to themes and choose theme adjuster. Then we can go to the track control panel and change the volume size from knob to faders at 100. So they look like this, which will make it easier to see when they move. So the best way to describe how VCAs work is to compare them to track grouping or folders. Let's start with track grouping. Let's make a new track down here and drag it to the top. Let's name it lead track. Then we'll select this track, hit shift G for track grouping. And that opens up the track grouping dialog and then we'll set it to lead for all of these parameters. And then we'll select the instrument tracks and set those to follow. And if we close it, this track will behave as the leader for these follow tracks. So if we move the lead fader, the follow tracks move as well. But if we look at the meter, we'll notice that audio isn't being sent to the master track. That's because with track grouping, the lead track is just controlling the follow track's faders. No audio is actually being sent there. In fact, if you want to automate this group, it's really just going to automate the follow tracks individually, but all at the same time, like this. Switch this to touch. We'll write some automation. And notice it wrote automation on the individual tracks or the follow tracks in addition to the lead track. But the lead track's automation isn't really going to affect anything. It's the individual track automation that matters for track grouping. Now let's take a look at folders. Let's make this track a folder instead. Hit the folder button right here. Now all our instruments are in this folder or folder track. And unlike with track grouping, the instrument tracks are going to be sending their audio to this track, much like a bus. And we'll see that level on the meter. And because audio is actually being sent to the folder track, we can get effects on there that will be applied to all the instruments in the folder. Let's add a filter. But there is one drawback to using folders. Let's say we wanted to create a post fader send for effects or a bus, and we could do that by creating a new track down here. Let's name it effects return. Let's take it out of being a folder right here. So this track is not in this folder. And now let's say we wanted to send the drums to this effects return. We would drag the routing from here and drop it on this track. And that creates this post fader send. But watch what happens if we bring down the volume of our folder. We still see full level being sent to this effects return or bus. So the dry sound compared to the wet sound 
from this effects return isn't going to stay in proportion if we adjust the level on our folder. But using a VCA or a VCA lead track will. So let's change this to a VCA lead track. We'll select this track, Shift G, to open up our track grouping. And this time we're going to choose VCA lead. And I also like to choose mute and solo to go with it, but not the volume or pan. That's already being controlled with the VCA. And now we're going to select our instrument tracks and choose VCA follow for those, and mute follow and solo follow. And now, if we adjust the volume of the VCA lead track, it still controls the group. But if you notice, the faders don't move. Because unlike with track grouping, it's not directly controlling those faders. And it's not sending audio to this track like a folder. Instead, we could think of it as an extra fader sitting on top of or right before the actual volume fader, still adjusting its volume. And we could write automation directly to the lead track. And the follow tracks are going to follow that envelope without having to have that envelope on the individual tracks. Of course, each individual track can still have their own envelope that will be considered along with the VCA. On playback, And because the VCA lead track is adjusting the output level of each individual track, it's going to affect the send level on each track as well. So it's going to keep the dry sound compared to the wet sound of our effects return in proportion. Check out the meter on our effects return as we lower the VCA. We can see the effects return is getting less signal sent from our drum track through its send. So it's very usable in these situations where we're using a post fader send, where a folder track just wouldn't work. So now we could use our VCA lead tracks to control groups or subgroups. For example, let's use this just for the drums, bass, and piano. So let's select the guitars and take them out of that group. Let's create another VCA for the guitars. Create another track and drag it up to here. We'll name it VCA Lead 2. Select it and switch this to Group 2. Because we need to use different groups for every VCA leader track we use, assuming we're controlling different groups of tracks like we are here. So for this, we'll make it a VCA Lead and a Solo and a Mute Lead. And the guitar tracks will be a VCA follow track and a mute and a solo follow track. So now this track is a VCA lead of the drums, bass, and piano, and this track is a VCA lead of the guitar tracks. So like I said, it's very useful for submixing or grouping our tracks and controlling them all from one fader. But my favorite feature for VCAs is using it with some actions. Let's say we want to bring down the level of our guitars just a bit. Let's select this track and bring it down. We brought them down about 5 dB. Let's say we wanted to send this change to the individual tracks and reset our lead track back to zero. Very useful during mixing. Let's open the action list. Let's type in VCA. And right over here, 
is an action that's going to apply all VCAs from selected tracks to group tracks and reset the volume, pan, and mute. So with this track selected, we could run that action and it reset this level back to zero and it readjusted the follow tracks by that amount, about 5 dB. Undo and redo. So it's very useful for making adjustments and resetting a lead track along the way. And we can do the same thing with automation. Let's say we want to automate this group. But we don't want to keep this automation on the VCA. We want to move it to the individual tracks. We can use the same action to do that. Just select this, open the action list, choose this one, run the action, and it moved the envelope from the VCA lead track to the individual tracks and reset the lead track back to zero. And we can keep building on top of this as much as we want. Keep writing new automation on our group or VCA lead track and applying it to the individual tracks on each pass. Just re-trigger that action, and it resets the VCA lead track and applies the automation or envelope to the individual tracks. So again, it's incredibly useful for controlling groups of tracks or submixing similar tracks during mixing. So that's pretty much it. That's how to use VCAs or VCA lead and follow tracks in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.